It's time for our big picture panel as we head into the closing bell. Cooper Howard and Kevin Gordon. Cooper's a director and fixed income strategist, and Kevin's a senior investment strategist at Charles Schwab. Great to see you guys both. Kind of a uh, big day here, uh, Kevin. We are back to the all-time record in the NASDAQ index, so uh, I guess a fresh testament to the power of uh, big tech earnings? Uh, probably, but I mean, I would note also that, you know, a lot of the strength today is also seen in um, the small caps and really re the rest of the market, not just, uh, you know, the big caps um, in, in, on the tech or in the tech sector. So, you know, it's been much broader. And even yesterday, um, you know, you had a pretty solid day as well. Participation wasn't as great as it is today, but, um, you know, that's really been the theme, um, sort of the consistent theme since the, lo the low in late October, where you have seen more of a broadening out participation has looked a lot better. So it's really the next leg higher from here since, you know, for a lot of indexes like the Russell 2000 or even the S&P, um, you know, you're not too far from where you were sort of mid to late summer. Um, and, you know, all the breadth statistics that we track are sort of in similar territory that you saw in late summer. And, you know, with now that we know with the benefit of hindsight, that was sort of a head fake, um, the rally that you saw into to the July 31st peak. So I think it's really from here, where do you go in terms of participation? That's much more important to watch in, in, my, in my view. How far down the quality spectrum do you suspect investors might be willing to reach, Kevin? How do we figure that out? Um, well, I mean, I think you just, it, this is maybe too simplistic of an answer, but you just, I guess, look at price. Uh, but, you know, price has been telling you that um, it, it's been uh, sort of the bias for investors to move down the cap or down the quality spectrum and the cap spectrum, but down the quality spectrum in particular. I, I'm not sure how much stock I'd put in that move just because, you know, if you're relatively bullish on the economy and you think the economy can handle, you know, higher more restrictive rates relative to what you had pre-pandemic or right after the pandemic, um, you know, I don't think that's an environment where lower quality companies do as well as they were, you know, with zero interest rate policy. Um, and I just think that's probably more of a secular theme than it is more of a cyclical theme. So has it been a great trade for some of the lower quality names? Sure. Um, do I think that lasts in perpetuity? No. But I don't think it needs to be this binary, you know, all or nothing decision for investors. You either go into low quality or you don't. Um, it's just the fact that lower quality areas of the market tend to do better when you've gone through a more drastic recession and you're sort of on your way out into a new expansion. Mm, okay. And uh, certainly hopes running high that that's what's happening here, uh, that we're getting a cycle refresh. Uh, top story on Bloomberg today about uh, credit optimism. We talked about at the top of the show, investors uh, really reaching there. Uh, and Cooper, as we see with bonds, they're pretty uh, much at peace. Kind of interesting, the two years not going the same way as the dollar today with the dollar down so big, but we're seemingly just been kind of hovering since the big move last week, a uh, couple of days we're just kind of stuck here. Any thoughts? Yeah, pretty quiet day today. I don't think that that's too surprising. We didn't really see any major market moving moves um, this morning or market data releases this morning. We got some housing data, but that tends to kind of not be a huge story as far as what's happening in the treasury market. I think the housing story is really kind of well known at this point that higher rates are weighing, weighing on sales. So I think that that's one thing that's playing out. Um, also, another factor is seasonality. As we near the market or the um, year end, a lot of market makers and a lot of, um, or I should say not necessarily market makers, but a lot of traders are starting to close up their books for this week. So in this year, so I think that we'll see less liquidity, potentially less moves in the market. Now that doesn't mean that we won't see any moves in the market. I think that again, it's gonna kind of try to be what happens with Fed policy and the market's gonna try to navigate any sort of Fed speak that comes out so far. We've had some uh, variance within some of the tone from some of these Fed speakers, but you know when we've already seen all of them combined on the dot plot, it's like, does this stuff have potential to really uh, move anything anytime soon, Cooper? You know, I think that the market's putting more weight on what Chairman Powell and the dot plot said last week, rather than what a confluence of speakers are saying this week. So we heard from Chairman Powell that they are starting to think about rate cuts. And then there have been quite a few speakers that have come out and said, started to say, no, we aren't considering rate cuts. And we're actually expecting to potentially hold rates at this elevated level for an extended period of time. So I think looking at what the market is looking at, 
they're putting more weight into what Chairman Powell is speak, saying rather than what the other Fed speakers are saying. I think also looking out to what we're expecting next year. Now, our view is that we're probably going to get about three rate cuts. The market is expecting about six rate cuts, so I think that that's a little overly aggressive. That difference in the dots plots, we're also projecting about three rate cuts. So that difference between what the market's expecting, what the dots are expecting, I do think that that could be a source of volatility. That's something that we've mentioned before on the past. Mm, okay. And uh, every time the uh, Fed moves a little closer to what the market wants, the market just pushes it uh, even further. Uh, Kevin, uh, is there a connection between the expectation for cuts and recessionary style earnings event? Or do earnings look like they could continue to grow through whatever environment is causing the market to price in cuts? Uh, well, for now, the expectation is for them to continue to grow. I mean, I don't think that the the growth rate in 24 is, you know, anything too exciting relative to history. But I think the fact that you have positive growth is probably more of the story than, um, you know, what, you know, debating over what the actual growth rate is. But, you know, you can go back in prior recessions and, you know, the market has not been, you know, that forward looking in terms of, you know, looking a year out where Fed policy is going to take the economy. That's why I think we have to be a little bit more of the shorter term view as to how the data is evolving and how the Fed looks at it. I mean, you know, Powell's been very clear about the fact that every meeting is, is basically a live meeting. Um, so I think that the lesson, you know, today, right now is, you know, for the market looking ahead for, for monetary policy is not as much, um, you know, it's wrong to assume that there's five or six cuts next year. I think, you know, that could be the case. But, um, you know, tell me what the economic environment is, and I'll tell you whether that's a good scenario or not. Um, I, you know, some aggressive, you know, pivot to rate cuts right away and very large rate cuts at that, that to me would skew more recessionary. That means that, you know, the economy is taking a bigger hit than was expected by the Fed and market participants. So I think it just matters what sort of the context is from an economic standpoint, not necessarily whether a cut is viewed as just good or bad as a binary outcome. I think you have to take a broader view and sort of through that macro lens and look at it that way. Totally. Okay. Uh, great stuff. Great thoughts. Appreciate it, guys. As always, Kevin Gordon, Cooper Howard, taking us into the bell here for a Schwab Big Picture panel.